Today is going to be a great day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to the Lone Doctrine, the food for thought exploration station and your place in making today better than yesterday. So we've started off this year with setting goals, resolutions, but also understanding the importance of connection in order to fulfill those goals and resolutions. I've mentioned this before, I'm not against making the typical New Year's resolutions, but I'm more so for creating betterment each and every day. Too many times we rely on the start of the year, on a refresh or a restart facade that we start with excitement and then lose steam, realizing we haven't accomplished much of anything or we're constantly telling ourselves, I'll do that someday. Well, I'll tell you now, someday is not a day of the week. We've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep, no, some day. Why start tomorrow what you can do today? I found myself saying that more often, not just to myself, but to others. I've said it in relationships to encourage friends to pursue their goals. And I've also said it to loved ones who are facing really, really serious things like addiction. No matter the scenario, even one step today is better than that someday or tomorrow because life is too fragile, too short to rely on tomorrow. You might be thinking, well, I can't just stop everything and change it all. Maybe not, but you can take one step And this month, we're going to talk about taking that moment, taking that one step at a time, even when life seems too overwhelming, even when you feel like you can't. This month, you and I are going to explore how we can. This may come to you as a surprise, but sometimes it's just what I'm about to share with you that gives us great perspective. We could go over all the self-help, motivational, guru advice, but sometimes it's just the mere regard for life that brings us more clarity, more perspective, and much of the unexpected in life. Today, I'd like to share with you a letter I found from a 27-year-old woman from Australia who was unfortunately on her deathbed and instructed her family to post it on Facebook after her passing. This is The real life matters. It's a strange thing to realize and accept your mortality at 26 years old. It's just one of those things you ignore. The day ticks by and you just expect they will keep on coming until the unexpected happens. I always imagined myself growing old, wrinkled and gray, most likely caused by the beautiful family, lots of kids. I planned on building with the love of my life. I want that so bad it hurts. That's the thing about life. It is fragile, precious, and unpredictable. And each day is a gift, not a given right. I'm 27 now. I don't want to go. I love my life. I am happy. I owe that to my loved ones. But the control is out of my hands. I haven't started this note before I die, so that death is feared. I like the fact that we are mostly ignorant to its inevitability except when I want to talk about it and it is treated like a taboo topic that will never happen to any of us. That's been a bit tough. I just want people to stop worrying so much about the small, meaningless stresses in life and try to remember that we all have the same fate after it all. So do what you can to make your time feel worthy and great, minus the BS. Those times you are Whining about ridiculous things, something I have noticed so much these past few months, just think about someone who is really facing a problem. Be grateful for your minor issue and get over it. It's okay to acknowledge that something is annoying, but try not to carry on about it and negatively affect other people's day. Once you do that, get out there and take a freaking big breath of that fresh air deep into your lungs Look at how blue the sky is and how green the trees are. It's so beautiful. Think how lucky you are to be able to just do that. Just breathe. You might have got caught in bad traffic today or had a bad sleep because your beautiful babies kept you awake. 
or your hairdresser cut your hair too short. Your new fake nails might have gotten a chip, your boobs are too small, you have cellulite in your arse, and your belly is wobbling. Let all that BS go. I swear you will not be thinking of those things when it is your turn to go. It is so insignificant when you look at life as a whole. I'm watching my body waste away right before my eyes with nothing I can do about it. And all I wish for is that I could have just one more birthday or Christmas with my family or just one more day with my partner and dog. Just one more. I hear people complaining about how terrible work is or about how hard it is to exercise. Be grateful you are physically able to. Work and exercise may seem like such trivial things until your body doesn't allow you to do either of them. I tried to live a healthy life. In fact, that was probably my major passion. Appreciate your good health and functioning body even if it isn't your ideal size. Look after it and embrace how amazing it is. Move it and nourish it with fresh food. Don't obsess over it. Remember there are more aspects to good health than the physical body. Work just as hard on finding your mental, emotional, and spiritual happiness too. That way you might just realize how insignificant and how unimportant having this stupidly portrayed perfect social media body really is. While on the topic, delete any account that pops up on your newsfeed that gives you a sense of feeling like poop about yourself. Friend or not, be ruthless with your own well-being. Be grateful for each day you don't have pain. And even in the days where you are unwell with the flu, a sore back, or a sprained ankle, accept it, but be thankful it isn't life-threatening and will eventually go away. Whine, complain less, and help each other more. Give, give, give. It is true that you gain more happiness doing things for others than doing them for yourself. I wish I did this more. Since I have been sick, I have met the most incredibly giving and kind people and been the receiver of the most thoughtful and loving words and support from my family, friends, and strangers. More than I could ever give in return. I will never forget this and I will be forever grateful to all these people. It is a weird thing having money to spend at the end of the day when you're dying. It's not a time you go out and buy material things that you usually would, like a new dress. It makes you think how silly it is that when we think it is worth spending so much money on new clothes and things in our lives. Buy your friends something kind instead of another dress, beauty product or jewelry for that next wedding. Number one, no one cares if you wear the same thing twice. Number two, it feels good to buy someone else something. Take them out for a meal, or better yet, cook them a meal. Shout out to their coffee. Give, buy them a plant, a massage, or a candle, and tell them you love them when you give it to them. Value other people's time. Don't keep them waiting because you aren't great at being on time. Get ready earlier if you are one of those people and appreciate that your friends want to share their time with you, not sit by themselves waiting on a mate you will gain respect too. This year, our family agreed to not do presents. And despite the tree looking rather sad and empty, I nearly cracked Christmas Eve. It was so nice because people didn't have the pressure of shopping and the effort went into writing a nice card for each other. Plus, imagine my family trying to buy me a present knowing they would probably end up with it themselves. Strange. It might seem lame, but those cards mean more to me than any impulse purchase could. Mind you, it was also easier to do in our house because we had no little kitties there. Anyways, moral of the story, presents are not needed for a meaningful Christmas. Use your money on experiences, or at least don't miss out on experiences because you spent all your money on material things. Put that effort to do that day trip to the beach you keep putting off. Dip your feet into the water, and dig your toes into the sand. Wet your face with salt water. Get amongst nature. Just try enjoying and being in the moments rather than capturing them through a screen on your phone. Life isn't meant to be lived through a screen, nor is it about getting the perfect photo. 
Enjoy the bloody moment, people. Stop trying to capture it for everyone else. Random rhetorical question. Are those several hours you spend doing your hair and your makeup each day to go out for one night really worth it? I've never understood this about females. Get up early sometimes and listen to the birds while you watch the beautiful colors the sun makes as it rises. Listen to music. Really listen. Music is therapy. Cuddle your dog. Talk to your friends. Put down your phone. Are they doing okay? Travel if it's your desire. Don't if it's not. Work to live. Don't live to work. Seriously, do what makes your heart feel happy. Eat the cake, zero guilt. Say no to things you really don't want to. Don't feel pressure to do what other people might think is a fulfilling life. You might want a mediocre life and that is so okay. Tell your loved ones you love them every time you get the chance and love them with everything you have. Also, remember if something is making you miserable, you do have the power to change it in work or love or whatever it may be. Have the guts to change. You don't know how much time you've got on this earth, so don't waste it being miserable. I know that is said all the time, but it couldn't be more true. Anyway, that's just one gal's life advice. Take it or leave it. Oh, and one last thing, if you can, do a good deed for humanity. This may not be what you expected. Our topic of the month is how you can turn can't into can But what better motivation than to realize our time is limited? What better advice could we receive from those so close, standing in the storm of passing on, to really listen and learn from them and in fact honor them by doing whatever you can, your best to make this life amazing? Before I let you head out into the week, I'd like to share with you some people's regrets in life as they entered their last days with us here on earth. I didn't take care of my body. I let anger get the best of me. I spent my entire life in my comfort zone. I thought I knew everything. I hated my job. I spent most of my life trying to be someone else. I wish I would have let myself be happier. I wish I would have stayed in better touch with my friends and family. I wish I would have had the courage to live Life true to myself. As I explored this concept, I sadly found list after list after list after list of regrets. There's no better time than now to learn from those who faced a time that we have yet to face. It can be taboo to speak of death, but there's no better motivator than the realization that tomorrow is not promised. I'll leave you with this quote by the late and amazing Wayne Dyer, stop acting as if life is a rehearsal. Live this day as if it were your last. The past is over and gone. The future is not guaranteed. So keep going. Keep moving forward even when times are hard. We will be keeping moving forward together. And I hope you'll join us on Facebook and Instagram and most social media platforms. We at The Lone Doctrine are a listener-supported podcast And the more support we receive, the more we can give. If you found value in The Lone Doctrine, we would be so grateful for your support. We've partnered up with Patreon, which is a place where you can help us stay on air and keep our doors open in supporting our listeners in making today better than yesterday. Thank you so much for your consideration, your support, and a special thank you to our current Patreons who make The Lone Doctrine possible. We hope to see you at patreon.com slash lone doctrine, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash lone doctrine. Together, we make a difference. Thank you for tuning into the Lone Doctrine and remember to keep fighting the good fight. It's a great.